Right. They don't play with Let me ask you, You're from Yemen. No, yes. Is there something about Middle Eastern people that makes them really fucking good at this job? Or like that they mm. just have the work ethic to hold it down? Or like, what do you think it is that they just dominate this category of store? You see how we are back home is hard. It's hard for us for living wise and mm. everything. So basically back home, people will carry rocks behind or yeah, rocks behind their back. Mm. And they're not even getting ten dollars a day. Yeah. You heard? And working for eight, nine hours just carrying rocks from bringing up to the floor, uh, to a uh, second floor, third floor for all day long. Cement. You know, uh, or digging big hole, uh, big uh, place a hole. Yeah. People they like some some people they get on a photo with the with the machines. What they call that the cat, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They don't they can't afford money, so they bring people dig boom, boom like I will give you twenty thousand in Arabic. Twenty thousand basically compared to a hundred dollars. That was back then. Yeah. Now. Sixty thousand compared to uh, is a hundred dollars. To do the now. ditch, to no, dig no, the ditch. Just like what is the value of Yemen? No, like sixty thousand to one is a hundred dollars, or to a hundred U.S. US dollars. A hundred U.S. That's dollars. What the fuck? So you're saying that like your people come here yes. and it doesn't seem like a bad deal nah, working in the store for minimum wage or whatever. Blue bills, baby. They, they <laughs> see the U.S. Yeah. money. They gonna go hard. Right. Seven days nonstop. They would do it for two, three years straight. Let me ask you something. When I my bodega, when I was when I was living in New York, or also even when we were back in Brooklyn just recently on this BMX trip, one of the things that I love about it is a lot of times you have a relationship with your bodega guy that they will like really help you out with a lot of little shit. Like, oh, my homie has to pick up his key, th this key that I have. Yeah. And I don't have anywhere that I can leave it for him to get it. So I go in and I give the fucking guy at the bodega a couple bucks. And I'm like, hey, this, this dude Phil's going to come in here and ask for this key. Can you just give it to him? <laughs> you guys down to help out with stuff like that? Like, so I would even have packages dropped off sometimes. I swear to God. And I would tip them. But they didn't mind helping out. I feel like your shit's nah, too nah, lit that you can't nah, be a, nah, nah. a part-time FedEx. It happened in all stores. Like, we had... Uh, we worked it with the what you call it, the FedEx and all that. Like, oh, that's fire! Really? Yeah, we did. You, not, you have the options now to do that. And that's part of what makes living in New York City feel like an actual community is that you kind of, you know, it's like your neighbors and you actually have a relationship with them beyond just the transaction and giving them it, money and they give you some shit. It is like, especially the store that is most popping in the community. That's like family with everybody. Mm. That's like, that's that's their second house. Mm. As they say, everybody that comes like sometimes I start barking out my way out like why are you here all day, bro? <laughs> this is my second house. Yeah, like are you serious, man? It's crazy because in New York we or in LA we don't have that. We say like, we all just go to a Seven Eleven. Maybe people who live in certain areas have yeah. that. I was but, about to say like yeah. you, know, you know for sure there's some. It's true, but even in like the nice parts of New York City where like expensive ass million dollar apartments and shit motherfuckers still got a bodega that they stop by to get breakfast or to get you know whatever they need yeah. for the day and shit it could be like a full vegan one but like you know yeah, it's, well. it's the vegan bodega is right there yeah. they have everything you have some regular stores now. They sell them ve vegan and all that, too. They you doing you sell all that kind of stuff, too? Yeah, I do. Because over you the years... The Beyond Burgers, well, the Impossible, I, all that. I lived in, like, Brooklyn and Queens till 2009. And then when I came back years later, all of a sudden, a lot of the bodegas have organic market or, you know, like, vegan, whatever. Like, all this, <laughs> this advertising that I'm like... This motherfucker is is saying that he's organic. Like I never would have thought this would be the yeah. kind of place that would have something like that up. But these are the places that are being gentrified, so they got to appeal to their new rich clientele, right? Mm -hmm. No, but I'm not even gonna lie. That was something that I didn't like. I've never experienced until going into the bodegas in New York. Like the fresh vegetables. Like you literally are chopping the bread and the meat and the cheese off a damn like loaf of it, and I'm just like, <laughs> like you have the most vibrant beautifully colored vegetables like you just pick them shits yourself in the damn yeah, backyard pick whatever you want and we're gonna make it happen but that's like that's that's such not a thing here I, like i don't think i have ever said more than how you doing to my corner store guy that mm. i've grew up with my entire life out yeah. here yeah out here because i just yeah. moved from there from first grade till i'm about to be 30 next year i just moved from there like two months ago 
I've Dang. never spoke to, uh, I've never said more than two words to this. Man. I think it's much more the norm in LA to like not really talk to the fucking guy that as your corner store. As I feel like in New York, even the when we were there for a week, by like the third day, the you fucking guy the working at the bodega is saying shit to me and Phil and like joking around with us about little things. It's a yeah. much more close family type vibe. Yeah. Me, me personally, like me as the a, a, a young man. I worked in a store, whatever. I've been to people's houses, like in the projects. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the I projects was, the was right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon I as think, we got out the whip, I, I'm like, okay. I think I was the first A rap from there in that community that had been in those projects. They can't go. A oh. lot of people cannot. It used to be. Is you Adam going to get accepted? Oh, I got no, a podcast. I, I, mean, <laughs> I got a podcast. <laughs> Yo, what's important? to like maintain good relationships with the community because in particular you know it's like in a lot of communities you might be like the only middle eastern people or it's it's, it's a small percentage in comparison to hispanic or black or white or whatever and it's like you got to try to be cool with everybody like what what are the things you've learned about how to kind of stay out of other people's bullshit keep the temperature low make sure the shit doesn't get aggressive like what have you learned no, I learned this is like when you see something going, out, just keep it, mind your business, just walk. Somebody come ask you, says, yo, where you could get this from or whatever. You just mind your business. I didn't even think I, about that. Yeah, uh -huh. That's yeah. probably, so you people like, ask you stuff like that? Yeah, like, yo, what I could get drugs? I what? don't know. Do you know people who have gotten caught up like that? Trust me, I've seen really? it all. Damn, damn seen now. it all, huh? Yeah. Nah, because I remember my dad growing up telling me about some guy he knew who worked at a grocery store who got 10 years for being a lookout. Like, straight what? up, like, on some, like, he just worked in this grocery store, and he was letting them do some kind of drug transaction in the back by the loading dock. Mm -hmm. And he let them do it and knew it was happening, and he got, like, 10 years. But how and, could they prove that he knew? I mean, probably cameras. phone calls. See, or and, seen him with them or probably something. Probably before, yeah, probably people telling, phone There's calls, always, know, all kinds of shit. Especially the grown people ones, like, yeah. the, the OG head. Now it's got to be super easy to make the mm -hmm. case. Back then, they'd probably write a letter. I would like you to engage in some <laughs> criminal activity with me. <laughs> Yeah. Man, no, but that's fucked up that people would even like put you in that predicament or bring that type of because because you don't you don't seem like that's the type of time. Come on, you on. never asked the bodega guy where I can get some coke. No, I don't want random <laughs> random bodega. Well, what if he coke? seems like he's kind of like with the shits? Like I'm I'm looking at him. This motherfucker got Gucci shoes on. Hey, where the coke at? <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel Yo. like you might know, and I respect you not telling me. But I'm saying I, if I was in that lifestyle, I might ask. No, you gotta ask like the niggas in front of the store hanging out, Hell not no. the guy that works in he the store. He got the plug no. prices, bro. He's got they the distributor. Can, they can tell you, he got they, he gotta get they, that boar's head work. They, they can tell they can tell you, I right, come grab a a, a, a Tylenol, a Advil, crush it up. <laughs> That's what you tell him. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He re rocking out here. No, no yeah, you asked for some coke. You're like, no, I got some Tylenol yeah, though. Nah, <laughs> that's what the people, I got some Monster Energy no, right I'm here. I'm just saying, he's like, why you don't ask the people that's outside the uh, store? Uh, that's what they do. Ah, we got you. Yeah, they go inside the store. Grab a Tylenol, all right. But how how much does the cops come in and they they ask you, hey, what what happened? There's a, there's a dead body outside. What happened? Ah uh, man, yeah, trust me. I, I don't know. I don't know. No, like I don't know. I was not here. I'm busy. Cause Such you gotta have good relationships with the cops too. You got I, hey, I'd be good with everybody, yeah. but I'm not. The boss is not here. Back home, somewhere you got. Right, just ask, yeah. Keep you keep out of it in general, because yeah, you, you don't want to be seen having a ten minute have, conversation with this cop mm -hmm. either, right? You don't oh, want to no. have no type of connect <laughs> with with those. Yo, we just hit four hundred thousand subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe, get us to five hundred k. Yeah.